A study shows that unshaved men can detect bed bugs better than women. <laughs> this proves evolution, apparently. Potholer needs to be filled in on thermodynamics, and we open a few letter bombs from our viewers. All this and more coming up in this edition of Genesis Week. <laughs> And a welcome to this episode of Genesis Week, the weekly program of creationary commentary on news, views, and events pertaining to the Origins controversy, exclusive right here on YouTube. The Bible does not say, be transformed by the removal of your mind, but rather we here at Genesis Week believe God gave you a brain for a reason. And so we use our brains here in search of the truth. And remember, if you get lost in cyberspace, just punch in wazulu.com or genesisweek.com and you will find us, or click the ever so convenient subscribe link right up top. I'm your host, Ian Juby. A December 14th biology letters paper by Isabel Dean and Michael T. Siva Joffe reported the results of an experiment where they shaved the armpits of men and women to see if they could detect bed bugs better. <laughs> uh, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> now, of course, in order to get research funding, you must give a nod to evolution. And the results must support evolution, even if the results don't support evolution, if you get what I'm getting at. For example, in the abstract we read, Although we are relatively naked in comparison with other primates, the human body is covered in a layer of fine hair, vellus and terminal hair, and a relatively high follicular density. There are relatively few explanations for the evolutionary maintenance of this type of human hair. <laughs> Talk about a stretch! Our lack of hair is really unexplainable by evolutionary theory, so we must find some advantage of the lack of human hair to offer an evolutionary explanation. So, what did they find? Well, I like the way Bob Yurko over at Fizor.com put it. Not surprisingly, men were better at detecting bed bugs on the unshaved arm due to having thicker and longer hair than women. As to why men are generally hairier looking than women, the researchers suggest it might be due to something as simple as women preferring men with fewer parasites on them, which would imply more hair. <laughs> wow. This report has the potential to affect online dating site profile photos for men, as clearly ladies are after the hairiest guy out there. After all, based on this scientific report, that's what you ladies are after. A hairy guy which means he's bed bug free, right? <laughs> now, this is just another example of how far people are willing to reach to make alleged benefits to be alleged evidence for evolution, even when evolution really cannot explain the evidence. Like in this case, the lack of fur on humans. But it sure makes a funny story. YouTuber Potholer54 recently posted a video setting fire to creationist straw men, which really strikes me as ironic as he delved into trying to debunk thermodynamics and subsequently burned himself really bad. Potholer definitely needs to be filled in on what thermodynamics is, and in fact, I'll have a rant coming out shortly mostly devoted to his video because while his discussion of thermodynamics was so bad and so full of flagrant gross errors, sadly, his response was typical of the anti-creationary community. But I bring that up along with these snowflakes that Potholer mentioned because Nature Magazine also had an article come out on the incredible variety snowflakes can produce. And just because it's winter here in Canada, what a better time to deal with what we creationists refer to as the stupid snowflake argument. Ugh. That's right, the claim is that incredibly complex snowflakes can form, therefore the laws of entropy or disorder are violated, therefore we can conclude that life can arise from non-life. Well, of course, Potholer first pulled the open systems argument, claiming that energy coming in from the sun can cause life to arise, and then cites snowflakes and sunflowers as examples? This makes it evident that Potholer doesn't have a clue what he's talking about. First of all, as I already pointed out in a previous rant, closed thermodynamic systems do not exist. The well-established laws of thermodynamics were formed to describe what happens in open systems. So why then would Potholer talk about closed systems? I can only think of two possible reasons. 
Ignorance or obfuscation? Snowflakes form by cooling. Yet Potholer was calling upon energy from the sun to magically defy disorder. Energy from the sun plays a role in evaporation of water, yes. But energy from the sun melts snowflakes. Then Potholer takes a quantum leap of faith, comparing a snowflake to the sunflower. What? <laughs> That's like saying that because a rock formed by natural processes, we can therefore conclude that the space shuttle can also form by natural processes. And even that crude comparison doesn't do it justice, because the space shuttle cannot reproduce, cannot repair itself, cannot find and process its own energy, etc. You know what the odds are that the space shuttle can form by natural processes? Well, it's quite easy to calculate, actually. The odds are zero that the space shuttle could form by natural processes. And so it goes even with the very proteins that the sunflower needs in order to live. But, to be honest, perhaps we should temper those odds with the fact that Kim Jong-il got 11 holes in one in his first game of golf. I wouldn't have thought that was possible either. Yeah, I didn't believe that story either. Snowflakes most certainly do follow the laws of thermodynamics and entropy. And snowflakes have absolutely nothing to do with life forming for non-life. Thanks for coming out. Woohoo! Mail for me? I wanted to give a special thank you to all my subscribers and viewers. Thank you for watching, and thanks for commenting. Now please know that while I try and read comments, I typically can't get to responding them, as my videos just get way too many comments. However, I will try to highlight some of your comments here and there, especially on Genesis Week. One YouTube skeptic, apparently not wanting to make his statements publicly, wrote to me privately. He was critical of my second pilot for Genesis Week episode, criticizing me for allegedly not knowing that dinosaurs are considered to be birds. I'm well aware of said claim. However, apparently you missed my point, so let me make it again. Calling a dinosaur a bird does not make it a bird. Citing cladistic diagrams is completely bogus because it's easy to show just how flexible cladistics are to accommodate the current favorite evolutionary theory. In fact, I wrote about this in my blog where some evolutionary, evolutionism thinkers were arguing over whether a hippo was most like a whale, a pig, or a dog. And they get paid for this. Oh, and by the way, there are multiple well-respected evolutionary scientists who disagree with you and claim that dinosaurs are not birds. They believe birds evolved separate from the dinosaurs. So much for cladistics. I just released another Crevo rant on the origin of life and evolution. You can click on the video here and go watch it right now, or the video will be provided again at the end of this program. In response to that video, Truth Seeker 1973 wrote in, I've always got a kick out of the way Evos dodge the whole origin topic. They, just as you state in this video, claim that evolution is completely different than the Big Bang. Therefore, let's argue evolution and not worry about its origins. It has everything to do with it. If the origins can't be explained, then you have no argument. Theist77 wrote, Thank you for your ministry, brother. God bless and may he be glorified. JMCH, a person very skilled in saying a lot in a very few words, put it succinctly, Evolutionists pwned. Thanks for writing in, folks. The trolls were hard at work again, flaunting their flagrant ignorance on so many subjects that I felt like the last male rabbit in a world of female rabbits during mating season. <laughs> Wherever do I begin? Most of the skeptical comments are really not even worthy of a response. However, some of you viewers stepped in with your comments. In response to the Science Foundation's flagrantly ignorant comments on the alleged genetic similarities between humans and chimps, Tube Not Me wrote, it's a free country. You can believe that if it pleases you. Well, again, supports is one of those words that can have a lot more significance in a given case to one person than another. And I wasn't talking of primates, but of humans. You may believe that you're descended from the same critter that is the ancestor of chimpanzees, gorillas, and so forth, but I find the differences at all levels more significant than the similarities. You're right on the money. 
The differences between humans and chimps are far beyond the genetic. But even just the genetic differences are fatal to the evolutionary model. For example, the Pseudoscience Foundation never mentions orphan genes, which are a 0% match between chimps and humans. And there's hundreds of orphan genes. Thanks for writing in, Tube Not Me. And for the rest of you viewers, I happen to discuss this very subject in my last newsletter, which you can read right here. Sign up for my newsletters right there. Well, I'm trying to keep these programs short, so I better sign off for now. Don't forget, there's only a few days left to get your video entry into the Epic Evolution Ponies Contest. I'm your host, Ian Juby, and hey, there's a convenient subscribe link right there. Don't miss a single rant or show. Subscribe to my channel today. And if you like this program and want to support it, please do me a favor. Just down below is a share button, complete with easy to click on links to share this video on Plus, Twitter, or Facebook. And don't forget to rate and rant down below. Remember the words of Christ who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. God bless you as you pursue the truth.